everyone, it's Jake of Jake's Metal Chat. Hope you're all well and welcome to episode 13 of my favorite death metal albums. Throws a little bit on the sore side because I went and saw Frozen Soul at the Fleece yesterday here in Bristol. They're currently in Manchester as we speak. Got the uh, tour date so you can see where they're playing. Um, Next saw... Body saw because obviously I got in the pit. I had a stage diver jump on me, as, as well as other people. As long as the stage diver glides and you catch him, perfect. But if you've been to a lot of shows like this, you're bound to get bound to get battered and bruised in in the pit, and you know coming out all just like awesome show. And have stage divers is like is like. Why is my neck hurt? Oh yeah, I was headbanging also. Stage divers. But it's all, it's all good fun. Anyway, I got six albums all together. As per usual, well, only four bands, but the last two, I put two albums. Because I have a lot of favourites from those two bands. So, let's crack on with the first band. They are from Denton, Texas. In the USA, they are currently on tour with Frozen Soul. I'm talking about Creeping Death, who I mentioned in my favorite underground metal releases, the first part of the US albums that I have. And I've, I've shown this one. I also got their new album, which is really cool. These guys have that mix of hardcore in their death metal. And... The album that I'm going to mention is their debut, Wretched Illusions. Really, really cool stuff right here. You can definitely get the uh, hardcore edge in there. And, of course, the new one, Boundless Domain, which I have heard, which will be featured in my, well, as February is the shortest month, my collection update basically February collection update anyway really cool album all the songs there of course we've got the CD there and we got the band there and it was uh, Trey here who I've had on the chat if you haven't seen that chat yet I'll put it down in the description below along with obviously all the bands And of course, with this booklet, of course, you've got lyrics. I'll just show the lyrics first. And I'm very tempted to stick this up on my wall. And the reason being, you've got a poster with it, which is really cool. Nice, uh, there we go. Nice poster there. So, the mic, so the microphone's not blocking it. Yep. Um, yeah, they're currently on tour with, like I said, with Frozen Soul, of course, from Texas. Uh, Texas has been getting a lot of great bands out. These guys, these guys, and of course, Power Trip as well. Such a great band. Just absolutely just gutting that Riley's been gone for four years now. May he rest in peace. At and you know, Texas metal bands are, you know, a lot of them just really cool. So, one of them I'm showing you right here. And look, just get a drink in. Um, if you're not too familiar with Creeping Death, then do check out their debut. Let's talk a bit about the band before we get on the next one. Of course, they formed in 2015. Uh, released their first single that year, and then their demo, then um, e and then two EPs, one in twenty sixteen, one in twenty eighteen. Of course, more singles, and then this album. Then they did the Wrecking Ball Metal Madness. That was with Devourment, another Texas band who I have seen before only once. Uh, the last neurotic death fest in 2015, so when these guys formed, 
if you like death metal and also like hardcore, this is a good blend of the two. There's another band I'll mention, and I need to find that album, uh, Gotamentis, who blend death metal and hardcore together so well. But if you like that blend of hardcore and death metal again, then you're going to like Creeping Death. And be sure to check out this album and their new one, which came out last year. Very much worth a listen if you are a fan of both styles. So uh, Creeping Death and Wretched Illusions. Really cool stuff there. And Oh, excuse me. Next band all the way from Denmark. I could not pronounce the name of the place it was they're from. Saw Matt the Griffin last week. You know, you can only fit 50 people in that room, and it's absolutely mental. I should know. I've played there twice with two different bands. I'm talking about based. Really, really solid, solid Danish death metal. You know, you can't go can't wrong with this band. Of course, I only had their debut at first. Now, I got all this stuff, which will be in the update once I once it gets closer to the end of this month. Once again, this is based. Yeah, they've also formed in 2015, by the way. And this is their 2019 album. I think I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Venom. Pretty sure I just butchered that to absolute, you know, just butchered it completely. Um, also got the uh, oh, well, now I'll take it out of the case, and of course, the band on the back. And I mentioned Power Trip earlier, and of course, uh, more than when Ozzy Osbourne met them all at the Griffin, all really cool, it cool guys. Absolutely a pleasure to see him here in Bristol. Because I missed them last time because they were with um, uh, Discarnate and Decapitated. And I completely missed that because, again, I'm an idiot and didn't think to get a ticket. Uh, there's the CD. I was just swapping it around. Bit the awkward there. Well, let's get the booklet out so you can actually see that. Does it? Oh, I'm not. Oh, not really, but really cool artwork nonetheless. And who everyone is. The, uh, it's Sven. Really cool guy. Got a hit from him over there. They're all, all really cool individuals. I was picturing of them getting ready before they go out. I really want his pace as a Rickenbacker. Just can't go on. And of course, there's lyrics with each picture. First time I saw these guys properly was at Bloodstock 2022 during that bloody heat wave. Um, yeah. Just a crazy, crazy amount of heat. That year, let's hope it's not this year because damn, so you like just consuming a lot of water. Of course, you got to keep hydrated, those things. Uh, excellent, excellent album. Like I said, some excellent Danish death metal. There's a lot more bands from Denmark again. Undergain, I mentioned Undergain, and they, they know them, of course. Um, of course, this released on them Century Media Records. There we go. Very, very crushing, very in your face, you know. And seeing these guys live is just totally, totally bonkers. And hearing this album again, totally bonkers. Fierce guitar work, you know, from the guitar, guitars and bass to the drumming to the vocals, all blended so well together. And it's like they got bits where it slows down and then bits where it just, you know, just speeds up and is in your face once again. 
very very cool stuff right here if you haven't seen these guys live yet i do highly recommend that you check them out i do have like i said i do have their other albums uh dance macabre and what's the other one yeah necro uh, necro i'm not going to try and pronounce it but i'll hopefully get it right before i do my collection update and of course their ep from 2022 and their debut ep from 2016 called marie magdalene which i can't wait to just put all this discography up basically that's what you're going to see on my instagram page if you follow me on instagram anyway be sure to check out based and venom really cool stuff right there now on to the bands that have two albums. Next one, all the way from Gothenburg, Sweden. Formed in 1990. Of course, I've mentioned them before on numerous different occasions. Is at the gates. One of the biggest melodic death metal bands going. There's a lot of a lot of solid melodic death metal bands. And these guys are one of them, and I have two of their albums right here. The first one is their 1992 debut album. The Red in the Sky is ours. And also their 1995 album, which they did an entire full set list of at Damnation two years ago. Slaughter of the Soul. Solid, solid stuff here. But let's talk about their debut. Um, of course, started going a little bit more melodic at that point, because if you listen to their demo, Gardens of Grief on 1991, very much just on that death metal side, quite death doom as well. Of course, very much death metal here, but starting to get a little bit more on that melodic side, what they are known for there. For that melodic sound, of course, released by Peaceville Records. If we can get there, uh, yeah, the light's just being rubbish right now, but yeah, you can see it. Picture of the band, uh, of course, it is a re release because it's got bonus live tracks and a demo track. Of course, the CD. You know, the logo right there. I mean, I love this logo, but I also like the logo from Slaughter of the Soul. Uh, No lyrics, but there are band pictures there. Live band pictures, which you just you can't go wrong with. And the artwork right there. Very simple, but simple. On some simple in a lot of cases is good. Now I know there's people out there who who love death metal and don't like melodic death metal. I think there's something under here. Yep, logo again. Just hit my mic. I know a lot of people don't like the melodic side of death metal, but I I, I do. And you know, as long as I, as long as it's done right, and this is done right, especially when you get to slaughter of the soul, very intense album this one when i get to it same with this one like i said it blends that heaviness of death metal and then you get the melodic parts added in there like so obviously favorite songs oh, i forgot to mention favorite songs from the last two albums and i'll quickly get this before i get the slot of the soul obviously Kingdom Gone, that's a really cool song within Windows. Those have to be my top three favorites. Through Gardens and Grief is a is a great one. Of course, the production is a lot I want to say a lot more raw, a lot raw than say uh Slaughter the Soul. Um but it doesn't take away from it to me, it doesn't take anything away from the album. Uh, I've seen these guys a bunch of times. I heard of them for quite a long time. Didn't get to see them until 
until I went to Bloodstock 2011, because the first time I went was 2010, they played 2011, I thought, all right, let's check these guys out, and I was completely blown away. And then I started, you know, hunting their albums. I got this one, as well as With Fear, I Kissed the Burning Darkness, Terminal Spirit Disease, Slaughter the Soul. Um, I do have At War with Reality. I don't think I have to drink from the night itself and the nightmare of being. I don't have any of those albums today, but once I do, be can my collection will be complete until they make another album. But if you want to start off somewhere with At the Gates, then definitely start off with the debut the red in the sky is ours now favorite tracks from this album i might have to get back on the page where i had the albums because obviously trying to read them uh basically the tracks three and four which is called one's called nigh hill and what's the title track the title track of this album and for Creeping Death, uh, Bloodlust Contamination, and Ripping Through Flesh are cool songs on there, and also, of course, the title track I do like very much as well. So, uh, get back to At The Gates, so do check out their debut, The Red In The Sky Is Ours. Now, let's talk about Slaughter Of The Soul. Of course, at this time they were on Eric Records. Of course, and I re release because it's got bonus stuff right there. Of course, you know, I had to listen to it again prior to them playing Damnation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because, you know, it's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant album. In my opinion, it is. A lot of people might. Like I said, won't like melodic death metal. But I think this is a phenomenal album, and I think people should give this a well, give this a go. Like, put in your CD player or buy it on vinyl and give it a good spin. Because I also have it on vinyl, which I had to uh, rearrange my vinyl collection because obviously the cupboard there is getting a bit big. But yes, I do have the album, and I don't think I show that in any collection update. But I might have done. I had to keep looking at my, I had to look at my videos for this one, thinking that I've already shown Creeping Death, and then I looked, it's like no, nope, that was the Metal Underground releases one. So, uh, like I said, you want to go from the beginning and start with Red in the Sky as ours, or if you were like, oh, at the gates, and then you heard about this album more than the others, then by all means, start with this one. You know, love my love my uh, Swedish metal, be it death metal, thrash metal, black metal, doom metal, whatever it is, I love it. And this band is well, on well and truly on that list. At the gates, once again with. The red in the sky is ours, and slaughter of the soul. Right onto my favorite death metal band of all time, one of my many favorites. Talked about them before from Coventry here in the UK, formed in 1986, disbanded in 2016. So after 30 years of playing death metal, you know that's a long time. Of course, I'm talking about Bolfer, who I have had on well i haven't had all of them on the chat i've had Carl on the chat uh, again i is it's going to be on one of my other videos in the description but anyway i've gone with two albums for them i've gone with their 1991 album their third album first one being in battle there is no law then realm of chaos and then that was quickly followed by that, by, by that two years later with War Master. Ooh. Awesome, awesome British death metal right here. Just awesome death metal in general. Eric Records, of course. I've got the CD 
right here, artwork there, and I do believe this is one that, yes, it is. Look at that. Awesome, awesome quality artwork right there. Of course, we've got the BAM right there. We've got Carl up there, Andy, who is in Def Collector, and they are playing Bristol, and I can't wait to see him. Gavin, Joe, and Barry. Some artwork there with some lyrics. Uh, get some lyrics there, because it's got some artwork right there. And I believe that's it for... Nope, it's more artwork. And, yeah, that's it. Warmaster by Bolfer is just classic, classic album from the early 90s, like early, like death metal in the early 90s, just, you know, it, you know, it was something else back then, you know, like learning this from those who grew up with the scene, were in the scene. You know, playing in bands. You know, one of the many bands throughout that was Bolt Furrow. And definitely this album is a pinnacle of that. Crushing guitars, bass, drums, vocals, Carl's vocals on the title track of Cenotaph. Just, the, you know, track, sorry, not the title track, the title track, War Master, the track Cenotaph. Thinking like I because it's the first one where they did a music video for, of course, love that track. And trying to think what other ones I liked, uh, obviously the title track and what dwells within quality stuff. Love the logo, love the artwork. You're not familiar with Bolt Fur, I highly recommend them. Highly, highly recommend Bolt for it. And I'm not just saying that because they're one of my favorite death metal bands. I'm saying that because they're, they're excellent. And of course, in 1998, they released another great album. So this was four years after their album for Victory, which I still yet to get. I still got all their other albums to get, because the only ones I have so far, obviously, War Master, In Battle There Is No Law, The Fourth Crusade, and Honor, Valor, Pride, and of course, Mercenary. Damn, weren't just, you know, late, late 1990s, Death Metal, just, no, no one really cared. About death metal, I wouldn't say no one really cared. Whoops, no one really cared. It was more like what black metal was, what everyone was listening to back then. You know, watching all a lot. Of, sorry, enough documentaries about how throughout like the mid mid late nineties, black metal was just everywhere. And then obviously mixing black metal and death metal bands at shows and now a lot of them are doing tours together. But back then it was like black metal versus death metal. But there were albums coming out in the late 90s that proved that death metal was still strong. This one definitely by Bolt for here. And some of the artwork again goes right there. And some lyrics there. Um, and here. And I think there's some stuff here. And there we go. Now, at this time, Carl hadn't been in the band for quite some time. I have to look that up when he left the band. Oh, he left in 94. Came back in 97 to 98, and then 2004 to 2016, because obviously past members include Alan West, who was the vocalist from 86 to 88. And then before 
David Ingram came into the band full time in 98 to 2004. He did live vocals in 96, but before that, from 95 to 96, one of the best vocalists in Dutch death metal, Martin Van Drunen, was doing live shows with Bolt Thrower. Here's the CD from the Mercenaries album. And I found an interview where it's just Joe, Barry, and Gavin talking. I think Martin was in the video as well. And it showed a clip, obviously, them playing in 91. And then one, one first was on 95, which had uh, Von Drunen on vocals. And whoever got to see that, you are lucky. Van Drunen and Bolt Thrower. Can't go, you know, can't really complain about that, can you? But yeah, with this album, very much just a Bolt Thrower album, for, you know, from the guitars, the bass, drums, vocals, just everything's just. Oof. And of course, this one was released on, like I said, Irate Records. This one was Metal Blade. And, you know, just, just a, just a seriously well-made album. You know, and like I said before, I love Bolt Thrower. They're one of my favourite death metal bands. One of my all-time favourite death metal bands. I have a lot, but if I was... If you had to ask me to do a list, it'd probably be difficult, but then I'll keep putting these guys at the top because just of how much dedication and you know time they've put into their music, it just works out so well. Be it that it has Carl on it, um, David on it, or when they were doing live shows from Van Drunen, it was just sorry about that. It was just... Oh, I got a bit of a runny nose. It's just... Quality, quality, quality. Death metal all the way with these guys. And this album proves it. The other albums prove it. <sighs> I do apologise for getting a bit of a runny nose. Hence why I had to wipe my nose. Well, yeah, definitely check out Mercenary if you want some late 90s death metal. Absolutely quality, absolute bangers, both of these albums. So once again, Bolt Thrower with Warmaster and Mercenary. Both quality albums, absolute bangers. And still one of the best death metal bands to ever grace, if we can use that word, the death metal scene. And that's it for a, another episode of my favorite death metal albums. Sorry again about wiping my nose. Um, I think I'm coming down with something now. Um course more favorite death metal albums to come more of those videos need to uh message my guest about tomorrow because obviously i'm going to get him on for a chat because i haven't done any of those chats in a while um excuse me and also now metal vault episode a day after that and then pretty much more of the same in the coming weeks. Of course, my um, February update as well. February, February collection update. And hopefully some more chats here on, of course, Jake's Metal Chat. Just need to just see when they're available and if we're both available at the same time. But anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're brand new to my channel, don't forget to like, share, uh, comment if you have anything on your mind, anything about the video, about the bands that you've seen here on this episode. And most importantly, do not forget to subscribe 
to keep up to date with everything that I am doing on this channel. So once again, do like the video and do share it around. Comment, feel free, to, feel free to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. That's most important. I've been Jake and Jake's Metal Chat. Keep that banner of metal held high. And I will see you all in the next one.